Welcome, welcome. Good Saturday morning to everybody, unless you're way across the world, and I think it's actually Sunday by now. Not sure. But anyway, welcome wherever you are, welcome. We're thrilled to have you. We really appreciate you being here. We just want to have a little bit of fun. We're going to sew up. This is the pattern of the month, 3219. You know, there's nothing really difficult about this pattern at all. I think it's just really, really fun. Tuesday night, we'll go over fitting. We'll go over optional styles. We'll go over all that kind of stuff. But I think sometimes to have the sewing down, it's really helpful. And, and I think it, it, it builds your confidence that you'll, hey, I can do that type attitude if you see it being done. So that was the goal for today. And then also we wanted to do just a little fundraiser for 900, for the 900 series. Our goal this weekend is to sell 100 DVDs. And we're getting there. We're going to get there. I think we're going to make it. And we need your help. And the 900 series is... Uh, is started out in June and so, or May I think it was May and we're not allowed to release we can't you know put anything free out on YouTube for six months after it releases that's our agreements so we can't even like tease you with a little you know episode so anyway we did that Chanel the other night on trims and hopefully you enjoyed that um, but thanks for being here and let's get sewing let's get sewing 32 19, <clears throat> 32 19. If you have any questions as we go along about where we're at, ask me because to, what includes today is just darts. It includes um, a fly front. We're going to do a fly pockets slash pockets, and then the waistband. So hopefully all those things will um, make it all easy for you, and you'll feel good about doing it. Um, I did make a fun version. We'll we'll go over it a little bit more on Tuesday night, but I wanted you to see this version. It's fabric. 4311. So can we show that real quick? Sorry. 4311. I'm going to show that because it's just adorable and I think it's so different. The pattern, the inspiration is ALC and ALC is a company out of um, actually California. ALC is Andrea Lieberman Company. And so she went to school in New York and then went to California and started a line. And she's got some incredibly cute things. I say that so that you'll know ALC is often what I'll do is when I want variations of a pattern when I've taken it from a designer I will go back to that designer because a lot of times they'll use the same pattern they'll just use it in a different way and so they'll actually give you great ideas as to how to use the same pattern alright so we're going to start with the guide sheet we'll go to the first column and the first column what we're doing is we're stitching the back darts and I've got mine marked and something I did before you all came, I arrived without you, um, I did all the dark. I mean, I surged around the whole entire pant pattern. You don't have to, it depends on the fabric you're making. If you're doing it out of a, a stretch, you know, you could not surge around all the sizes, but I was doing it out of a woven. And when I'm doing it out of woven, I want to um, really preserve the I don't want, um, I want a smooth side seam. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I want a smooth side seam, and so I'm gonna surge all the way around the pant, and then I'm gonna construct on the sewing machine. So this is, I've surged around each piece, all the way around, and now what I'm doing is um, stitching the dart. And I mark my darts by clips at the top, and I'll do just a pin at the bottom of the dart. I don't backstitch, because I just don't want that bulk but I will go ahead and tie off a knot at the bottom of the dart. Also, by starting at the bottom, I know many of you know I start at the bottom. <clears throat> by starting at the bottom, you really give yourself the ability to be much more gradual. When you start at the top, a lot of times you're gonna miss the bottom and because you know you're gonna miss the bottom, you panic, and you make right turns onto fabric or left turns that you shouldn't be making. Speaking of left turns you shouldn't be making. Anyway, you make left turns you shouldn't be making. In life you get tickets, but in sewing you get a really poorly looking dart. If you're lucky you don't get tickets. Alright, so there's four darts. We've got two darts in each of the back panels. Um, for you, those of you who have a straighter waist, you, you may not need both darts. Um, and if you're going to delete a dart, you can just remove it and or not stitch it. 
you want to do the one that is called the side dart. It's not the one that's closest to the center, it's the one that's closest to the side seam. You want to leave, so I'm going to hold those up. You can see the crotch right here. You want to release this one. If you need more circumference at the waist, but the hip is okay, if you've got a thick waist, release this dart, leave this one always. This one's in line with the grain, and so we want to leave that in place. Okay? All right, so then the next step on that same page is we're going to sew center back seam. Oh, I cheated, you guys. I must confess. I've actually stitched the other half. So I decided there was no reason for you to watch me stitch four darts, and we can have a sew along, but it can only take half as long a time. And so I already stitched the other side, just so you're not losing anything except a little boredom and watching me, right? Okay, when we want to look slimmer, is it better to use a more structured fabric for these pants? No. In fact, just the opposite. Let's, let's talk about that fabric for just a minute. I appreciate that question. So we're using fabric number 4432. I chose this fabric number one because it's a, it's a light color, and I, selfishly, I wanted a light color for summer. It's a beautiful piece of fabric. I, I mean, it is just gorgeous. It is 100% cotton. It is light, but it has drape to it. I, I mean, it's just stunning, it's gorgeous. So the light of the fat, like I'm gonna go back to this fabric right here, 4311, and you can look at that online. You don't necessarily need to see it. I know Brett's trying to zoom over there with the camera real quick. But that is a very thin fabric, but very great drape. And I just wanted you to see the differences of fabric. They're both about the same as far as lightweight, and yet, that gives a completely different look, mainly because it's floral and et cetera, et cetera. But the harsher the fabric, the more it'll, uh, the less it'll drape, the less it'll drape. And you want good drape. So I put up new fabrics, and all those fabrics I put up, I, I put up nine new ones. Those are really good fabrics for these pants. I put up some, uh, there, and there's a wide variety. I put up um, a scuba. The purple, that really, the other purple, the lightweight purple that I put up, that is really for a top. And then the other, um, the other, the prints I put up, those could be pants, but they could be tops also. So I want, I really wanted you to kind of think outside of the box as far as what we use for these pants. These are a fun pant, or they can be a dress pant. They can really be either one. All right, so now we've got our beautiful pant back, and you can see it, it really is a beautiful pant back. It's got a really beautiful structure to it. So we're gonna go to column number two, and I'm not gonna press that yet, because I don't need to get up, because I can cons carry on with uh, number two. Okay, so the first thing we did is we sewed the notch at the bottom, and I did that. I did that because what you wanna do when you sew up to that point as you can see that the rest of the opening that you leave open to prepare to put for the fly, I just press back. So it's all pressed back and it's all surged. And that's the easiest, smoothest way. I've had women say to me, I hate a fly front, it's so bulky. I promise you guys, this fly front is just extraordinary. It's beautiful, it's flat, it's very slimming. It's, I know it's on your tummy, but it, it's just really lays beautifully. I'm gonna take off my regular foot, and I'm gonna put on my zipper foot. And what I love about this method, and I know many of you know it and swear by it, and you love it, and once you do it, you'll all love it. You put, you're gonna take your needle and put it all the way to the left, and you're gonna leave it all the way to the left the whole entire time. And I always say, it's kind of like a check to make sure you're doing this correct, because the needle should be correct, and it should be to the left if the procedure is right. What I'm sewing on is I took piece number eight, it's called the zipper assembly. I folded it in half, wrong sides together, and I just surged the side in the end is all. And so it gives you a nice fold along here. You can see there's your fold. And the other zipper assembly, when you cut these out, you're only cutting one layer of each. I just surged one side and one end of this piece. So you've got two pieces. Your pant itself, has no, um, nothing added on. A lot of your patterns have that little curvy thing. That's not how it's done in ready to wear. Uh, the pieces are added in. And that's simply because both fronts can be cut the same. It's fast, it's easy, 
and these pieces can be added on. And you have much more control when you have seams rather than not seams. All right, so we're going to um, basically stitching the zipper to the zipper assembly piece. I think a lot of them also, especially when I'm showing this for the first time, they um, cannot figure out why I'm not being careful to the zipper. And what I love about this method is the zipper really doesn't have anything to do with it except that I'm putting the zipper in. But I don't have to get close to the zipper at all. You can see my stitching. I know it's hard to see my stitching because my thread matches so well. But my stitching is way over here and my zipper is there. In fact, the last thing you really want to do is try to get that close to the zipper. It actually, there's no advantage and there's all kinds of disadvantages. After you serge your pattern, what is the final seam allowance you end up with? You still stay with 3 eighths. You're not, when you serge your pattern, you're not serging anything off. You've, you actually should do a three thread. I did a four thread, but that just reduces some of that bulk in there. It's not that big a deal, but you're not, sur don't serge away seam allowance. You're just simply um, finishing the edge. All right. Okay. So this is my, um, this would be the left side of my pant. I've already folded the seam allowance back. So what I'm going to do here, get this all out of the way, and I'm going to put this closer to the camera. As you can see, I'm going to lay that right on top. And again, it does not have to be like right next to the zipper. All My only goal is to cover the previous stitch. And I'm going to start at the top. Don't back stitch. But you are going to do what's called an edge stitch. You can see it right there on the edge. I'm hoping you can see that. You know, I was tempted to use different color zippers and different color all that so that you could see a little bit better. Should I have? You guys can tell me. Sometimes I, I still want the, the whole garment to look beautiful that I get too matchy-matchy and you can't see. So I'm hopeful you can see that. Now what you want to do is as you're stitching this and you're on the edge, you kind of, I want you to think of a dart. You can see that I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to where that dot is that I've pre-stitched to where literally I'm right there and then you're going to back stitch. So you, you know it's just really precision. It's not hard. You can go slow and if you don't cover it all the way you can always um, cover it with this next piece, okay? But I want you to just take a look at it. I'm on the edge, edge, edge. And you can see as I get down here, I come off to nothing right there. Okay, so everything is going to meet right there. Okay? Can you tell us how we line the pants? You're just going to make a whole other exact copy of uh, the front and the back. And you're just going to, you've got, you've got two ways. You can sew it as one. I don't. I drop it in with the waistband. When we get to the waistband, that's when you'll attach it. The only thing you want to do when you line is put the pockets, when you cut out the front, put the pockets, and I'm going to cover this on Tuesday too, put the pockets um, as if the pockets plus the front make up the, f the whole front from the original. So you can put the pocket behind when you cut the lining and just bypass the pocket so that the, there's no, uh, you don't have a lining in the pocket. I don't have a pocket in the line, I think I said that backwards, sorry about that. All right, so then um, the next step on my fly is I'm going to take the little piece, the smaller piece, and I'm going to serge that, I'm sorry, I'm going to do right sides together, right again on the seam allowance, and I'm going to stitch that. If you kind of look ahead a little bit, you can see exactly where that seam allowance, I've pressed it back so you can see where it is. I'm just going to lay those two together. Now, I think another reason I love this method is it's just so fail-proof. Notice that where it's coming together is right there. That's my backstitched point. I don't have to stitch to that backstitched point. I don't even have to backstitch because what you recognize is this piece right here now is going to wrap around to the inside. And when it wraps around to the inside, whether these two are exactly stitched together at one point, it just doesn't make any difference. See how pretty that is? Just a beautiful fly, it really is. Okay, I've already pressed that, and so you can see it's already wrapping to the inside, and I stitched right inside the stitch line, and so you can see that my seam is just barely to the inside. I'll come kind of close up on that, just so you can see. Yeah, they're all the same, so there you go. You can see that my seam is just, we'll leave it there and the camera will focus. Okay, 
So my seam is just barely wrapped to the inside. So what you're going to do now, and if you haven't pressed, you can take the time to press now, is I'm going to pull all these pieces inside and just kind of lay them how they should be. And then what makes the fly, I think, work well is this section right here. I'm going to start from the very bottom. I'm going to start where it literally crosses, and I'm going to put a pin there. And the pin needs to be vertical. And then I'm going to come all the way up, and I'm going to overlap this seam just a little bit. And that will create that zipper from ever poking or pulling. You see a lot of zippers that kind of even when you have the pants on, the zipper shows. The zipper is not done correctly because it shows. So you can see there's the fly. How do you line when you deal with the zipper? So you're going to, oh, when you line, yeah, how do you deal with the zipper? So let's look at the back for a minute. So you notice that I'm going to call it the left side and the right side. This is the left side. This is the right side. I know that as you're looking at it, that's not the case. But of the pant, this is the left side. The left side, nothing is done. You can literally sew it right into the seam when you do the lining. You can attach it. It's the right side. And all you're going to do on the right side is you're going to cut away the lining to be the width of the fly. And you're going to attach it to this piece right here. So it needs to be the width minus, you know, not minus the seam allowance, narrower, and then you just attach it. And it's not attached all the way down, it's not attached through the crotch. It's only attached through here, and the crotch is left open. The crotch is not attached to the pant, it's only attached here, and then here on this side, and then all the way around at the waist. So on the front you can see that I've got that, that beautifully pinned. So now I'm going to come around to the back, and you, the next part in your instructions is get rid of this little, um, that's your first assembly portion, and take just the thin, the single layer and the zipper. And again, you're going to be on the left side, the needle is going to be on the left side, and what you're doing right now is you're attaching the zipper to the other side of the pant. You've got it attached to one side, you've got to attach it to the other side. And again, when you switch this portion, it just doesn't make one bit of difference. Where is the of my pant all pinned together so nothing can be changing from where it is center and front. In fact, after you stitch this, you won't even see any difference in center front. But when I come in here now, the zipper is attached to this piece. The whole reason this piece is, exists is to make the fly wider than the width of the zipper. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this piece to the pant front and I'm going to move that assembly, that zipper assembly, out of the way. So here it is, I've got the zipper assembly moved out of the way. Everybody okay with where we're at? And I'm, I take off my zipper foot at this point. I put on my regular, um, and not that it matters, I just think my regular foot for me gives me more control. And then how you do this, there's a myriad of ways to do this. If you buy a regular zipper that has a, you know, that comes in a little package, there's actually a template on that zipper package. I don't buy zippers like that. I get them in New York and I buy them like, you know, by the dozens. Um, so I don't have that little template. And what I use is I make my flies one and a quarter inch wide. And again, this is your call. But I just use a tape measure. I'm going to start at the top. Keep in mind, I'm just stitching through two layers. My zipper assembly is folded out of the way. If you stitch that zipper assembly, you only do that once because you won't be able to unzip your zipper. You won't be able to get your pants on. So it's not something you'll do repeatedly. It's a good lesson to say, whoops, I screwed that up. And then I just slide this down. So it's going to be parallel to center front. Is this zipper the, is, is this zipper method the same as in Sally's pant? It is, yeah. It, it's the best zipper method on the planet. I just don't think I'd ever have another zipper method. There's lots of ways to put in a zipper. To me, this is bar none. It's the way they all do them. I mean, I, I, you can look around the ready-made pants and see that it's done this way. So you're just going to go in. Now, when you're about an inch, which is where I am now, you're about an inch above where you're going to bring it in. And where you're going to swing it around is right at, at that dot. Again, right at the point. So you're just going to bring it around. If you're not sure, you could chalk it. You know, you can do several different things if you want. When you get to that zipper, 
just be careful, recognize that um, I always get a zipper that's longer than what I need because I'm just not one to break needles or I don't like to break needles. And so just be careful or hand walk it, either one. And I just do a little back stitch and then you're good to go and show you this fly. You can see they're beautiful. Very simple to do, you guys. And again, I think this method is just amazing. All right, so I think you can see that under the camera. I'm going to take these pins out. I'm going to pull that back, and you can see how beautiful that fly is. Beautiful. Just simple, easy, beautiful. Now, the zipper assembly in the back is flappy and free. So you're going to take it and at the bottom, just sew them both going the same direction. If it's too long, you can just cut it off. You know, if you're shorter and you don't like a zipper that long, just cut it off and then you can serge the bottom. And so now I've got that zipper in. As far as thread color, you want to use a thread color that's obviously matching. I probably matched a little bit too well, huh? Except if you're doing like a denim. If you're doing a denim, see there? And then we'll unzip. There's a beautiful fly. And it's going to protect your tummy. It's the best fly on the market. I don't know if there's flies on the market, but y'all know what I'm saying. Okay, easy enough? Okay, so that's the second column. Let's go to the third column. We've got a fly in. You're always better off to do your fly in the beginning, which is why I'm big on making a muslin because if if it doesn't, you want to know when you're sewing the garment that the garment fits. Otherwise, you don't put in the zipper at first. You don't, you know, you do too many things that then come along and take more time in the end. So when I'm making that final pan, I want to know it fits and I want to put the fly in when the pant is flat because that's the easiest time to manipulate it, which is why we did it at that point. Um, the, the next the column is actually, I didn't have you switch, sorry. That's actually the part we're doing, but you've got the pattern, it's in your directions. Let's go to the next column. All right, and the next column is showing you joining the pant. And so while I did the one side, because again, you guys, you know, don't need to watch me do the same thing twice, I'm gonna add this other side and do it the exact same way that I did. So these two I've surged, and these two are the ones, this is the, it's not called a princess seam, but if I could call it a princess seam, it's a princess seam down the front of a pair of pants. It's in uh, line with the grain. It's in, you know, it's not a princess seam. A princess seam, by definition, only refers to the bodice. It does not refer to pants, so I probably shouldn't even have said that. And I'm going to do three eighths all the way down. dot on your pattern and that's where you're going to stop stitching that's your um, you know your little sexy flare there I put a pin here and so I'm going to and then I'm going to back stitch all right now we've got this cool pan with this fun opening I think in the summertime it's really fun to have the opening I think in the wintertime it's amazing to wear boots under the opening. Okay, so now you can see that we're going to press this open. And because I really should press it before I do the next step, I'm going to press the back and the back darts and all that stuff at the same time. And while I'm at it, well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll not do too much at one time. Okay, how could we add a seam on the back of the pants to match the front? Would it be a straight line from the dart that is closest to center back to the center of the hem? Yes, the answer is right, but to the center of the hem. Yep, perfect. See, I love it. You guys are often designing your own pants now. You don't need me. I say that all the time. You don't need me. Okay, all I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to press the seam open. And then as I remember that I didn't stitch it all the way down, because I'm going to top stitch all the way down, it's just a good idea to, I think what makes your top stitching have a tendency to be a little more straight, 
is I'm going to press those seams open just as if they were stitched. So I'm going to press a 3 8 inch seam back. If you're lining the pants, I would um, I would attach this portion because otherwise I think the lining will kick out from inside the pant. I've actually seen this pant really, really high end. ALC is not cheap, but I've actually seen it even more high end. So for some reason I decided to do it. I just love the pant. I think it's just really cute. The width of the leg is really stylish right now as well. Okay, so I've got that pressed. And the reason I chose this white also is I wanted you to see, you could, you could see a little bit behind the pant, but it's surprising for as light as the fabric is, how little you can see through the pant. And if we press that fly right there, look how skinny that is, you guys. Look how nice and flat that is. It's just beautiful. Okay, so we're going to top stitch, and then I wanted to press these darts. And darts um, on the back are pressed toward the center. And then I have to press that center back seam open. What's really nice about sewing with anything that cotton in it, it just responds so beautifully to an iron. Any questions? Do, am I behind? Okay, sorry, just hang on just one second. I always think I can do two things at once, but I think as I'm getting older, I'm learning I cannot do two things at once. I can do two things at once, I just do both of them very badly. So that's what I've learned. Um, hi Peggy, this is my first time ever seeing one of your videos. Well, welcome, thanks for being here. Question, how may I be prepared for your next live video? Meaning having the pattern, fabrics, and notions needed. Well, um, we, how prepared you want to be is completely up to you. I feel like, gosh, at any point in time, this video is there and you can get the pattern and then sew with me. Like if it's tomorrow or next week, it's okay. It's a sew along. And if you want to sew at this point, you can. And if not, but we do announce these at least 10 days before we do them, which does give you enough time to get the pattern order it, you know, and do those things. And again, because this is pattern of the month for June, I really try to support the POMs. I really try to have some kind of sew along, unless they're just really, really easy. But um, I don't, like Giorgio's top, we did Giorgio's top, but I don't think, we didn't do a sew along for Giorgio's top, did we? I think we did the PBS one at that time. Um, so just watch for the announcements, get on our email list. I think that's probably the best way is to get on our email list because that's how I communicate with you all is via email. I'm five foot, where should I stop stitching the center front seam? It should be right about the knee. It's your call. It's, it's really a modesty decision, but you want it really, if it goes too far below the knee, the pant's not even gonna open. And keep in mind, if you stop stitching at the knee, the knee probably won't show. If you really like your legs and, and you really want to expose, you could stop, stop stitching at the thigh and leave the whole bottom open. It'll still hang and it'll be beautiful and completely up to you. Like in the winter time, if I was kind of going to a party and wanted to play a little bit more, I'd probably wear tights underneath and then let that slit be higher. I think that would be really pretty. So it all depends on where I'm wearing them. This one to me is more like to the beach and casual and so, you know, I, I did that according to the pattern. So we get to have variables and think about what we want to do. Okay, so now we're going to add a pocket. And this particular pocket, whenever you have a pocket, um, and what I was saying earlier about the lining, is the pocket is actually a part of the pant front. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. If I were to take this pattern piece right here and put it underneath the pattern front, um, at least when it's a slash pocket, which is what this is, you can see right there, I think you can see, yeah, how the pattern plus the fabric equals the pant. So if you're doing the lining and you want to bypass pockets, because you don't want pockets in your lining, just follow your notches 
put on your pocket facing, put on your pocket, just glue them together, kind of tape them together, and um, just completely bypass the whole pocket deal, which is, I didn't want pockets in that one. Um, so I actually bypassed the pocket on the on the pant itself. I just didn't want the pocket, period. I'm not a pocket person. I put them in for you guys. Is that a deal? Because I've got emails that I think you go to the church of pockets. You love pockets. Like you love pockets. I don't like pockets. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna sew this little, little line here. I put, when I started, I put a pin, you guys, into all the places where it was the right side because this particular fabric, it definitely has a right and wrong side, but I felt like it was easy enough to confuse it and I didn't want to. I'm going to press this. I would not um, try not to press it with just a quick little press. I probably should have sewn it before I got up to press everything else. Oh, I forgot to stitch the top stitching, didn't I? Yeah. Did. We'll stitch that here in a minute, but I'll go ahead and press my pocket. So you're going to press that pocket and then you're going to turn it to the inside. It's kind of just like with a fly. You want to just bring that seam just barely to the inside and it'll match the rest of the side seam. It's very beautiful. You want to do the pocket after you stitch the front because um, you don't want the pocket to get in your way. So let's go ahead and let's stitch that front seam. Okay, these kind of pockets sometimes don't sit um, flat on my hips. She retracted her message, so. She retracted it? Don't answer it? I got the Okay, we won't answer that question. Oh, that's okay. You didn't retract it. That's okay, you guys. Um, okay, so. Although the pant is the right size, why is that? Yeah, it's the French curve. It's the shape of the French curve. If that hip, that, you have to have the French curve and it has to be right, you can increase the circumference all day long. And if the shape of the French curve is not accurate, that's, the pockets are gonna tell you. So if you like pockets, I would definitely put them in your muslin. I would sew them down and then I would, um, Make sure the shape of the French curve is correct. You're going to find on this pattern, you guys, it fits really well. If we go back to many years ago, there was a designer. She's passed away now. Anyway, her name is Liz Claiborne. And Liz Claiborne got rich, ridiculously rich, off her pants. And what she did that was so good is she used um, the upper portion of the French curve. I don't have a French curve sitting here, but she used the upper portion of the French curve. And prior to that, uh, the French curve had come from men's pants, and a lot of the hip lines were too straight for women. And they just, they just didn't fit. They were too straight. The circumference fit, but the shape of the hip did not. So get yourself a really good French curve, and know what your numbers are. And I say, know what you are at the waist, know what you are at the hip. Know what your numbers are. Okay, so this is just a simple top stitching. Top to bottom, bottom to top. And again, if you're doing lining, you could anchor the lining in here. And then leave it open the rest of the leg. One, I don't know why I don't like lined pants. Tell me why you guys like lined pants. I just don't care for them. I don't think there's any value to, to them. But I'm all ears if you guys tell me why you like them. Because I could easily put in a, a lining pattern. has a lot of marks and so it's easy enough to just pick a mark and go all the way down the front that's so pretty look how that looks you guys on the camera there can you see that 
that pretty? It's just a really nice, it's almost just accents the grain line. Just really pretty. Okay, then we're gonna turn this pocket back and we're gonna place it on top. And you've got, um, you'll have notches to match all these pockets up. But even if you don't need to, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna put this on here and just lay it flat and it will lay like it's supposed to. Let me get this flat, sorry you guys. Okay, so once it's turned and laid in place, you can see that it lays everywhere. All you have to do is put this pocket on top and match the edges. And it will automatically be placed in the right place. So you can see that difference here. And so when I go to pin it, I'm just going to pin it together, just the two layers, because that's where I'm going to sew. I'm not even going to worry about where it is over here. And I'm going to sew the bottom of that pocket. And I think that's the bottom of this step that we're on. Except I don't think I sewed this. Yeah, I didn't sew this part. You want to sew where you where you sewed the two pieces together and you folded it back. You want to stitch that because your pocket should lay flat without it. But it will really, especially if you use your pocket, it will really hold it in nice shape. I forgot to do that top stitching on the front. I'm now I'm following the guide and I'm all caddy like this. Okay, now I can stitch this portion. And the only reason the order we go, obviously you can see you can switch the order, is it has a tendency to um, not overlap. It's a little easier. I did make this pocket fairly deep, so some of you may not like it that deep. You just want to check off the bottom. Some of you may want it deeper and you can just add to it. Sure. What I do know about pockets is they're always getting holes in them. For women who use them, for men who use them, they're always getting holes. I think that's always kind of funny. Somebody puts something in their pocket that goes all the way to the ground. Uh, where may I subscribe to your email list? That's a good question, guys. Uh, they go to the front page and Brett, help me. Where did they go? Oh, join our email list. On the very front page, it has a join our email list. And then where it says join our email list, it has you fill out like a little thing, a little, it's a terrible description. It has you fill out a little form, join our email list. Um, yeah, there we go. On the left-hand column, on the left-hand side of the side, it says what's new. The third thing down, it says, join our email community. And you can go there. Um, what that does, you know, emails, we kind of abide by all the rules of emails. A lot of companies don't, but we do. Um, and so you'll have to, ha you'll get a confirmation email. They'll send you a confirmation. You'll have to confirm. And that's it. It's pretty easy. Look at our pocket, you guys. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. It's so cool. So pretty. I did the other side so you wouldn't have to sit while I did the other side. I'm just going to give it a press just, 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 just because. Just to make sure it's all nice and flat. Okay, what was that comment? I saw it and then I, I moved my head. It'll come back up. Just a minute. I like lined pants. We have lots of lining in, you guys. It's all from theory. It's beautiful lining. If you like lined pants, it's the time to get it. I didn't really ask you why you like them as a trick. I really wanted to know why. But I was worried about <laughs> the reasons that you told me. You like lined pants for the clean look on the inside. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that you that it's, it is pretty. But once you put them on, there, you don't see them anymore. It's like a car. Once you get inside, you don't know what kind of car you're in. Line pants feel nice, a slippery, soft lining. They do. I would, I would agree with that, too. I would agree with that. But if you use really beautiful fabric, that feels pretty good, too. But yeah, I remember. I haven't worn line pants in a long time. I mean, I have a couple pair that I wear all the time. Um, look, you guys. Look how fun. Oh, my goodness. They actually look like a pair of pants. Okay. I think we're on the next column, which is number, is it five? 
pants. Well, it's probably not five for you guys, but me numbered at five. Oh, look, we're actually going to make the pants. We actually do the side seams. We're ready for the front to join the front and the back together. This is way too much fun. Just make sure you put the right sides together and don't do the wrong side. Make sure you have the pocket laying down. I put a little pin there. And we're off to the races. Remember, you already did your muslin and you already know they fit, right girls? Right? Good answer. sure my leg is going to match. And there we go. those documentaries they're really cool so sometimes I come out of my sewing room feeling really smarter than when I went in okay now I'm doing the next one I have a tendency to really like sewing the side seams versus surgeon press them in a minute and I just love how nice and flat they lay. I really do. The pants I have on are the yoga pant and they're a stretch fabric and so you know it's a different issue. The whole they're surged completely together. But other questions? Okay, I like lined pants when the shell fabric is translucent. Oh, that's fair. So you like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a, you know, if that's the case, you guys, if the shell fabric is translucent, I would, uh, I would fuse them. I would use the fusing and, and fuse the pant. I mean, it's a different look, but just think about that because when you're wearing a pair of pants that's completely blouse. When talking proportions for an outfit with this pant, would we divide the length from the shoulder to the hem? Okay, so I'm going to press these while I'm answering that question. You don't really need to worry about proportions when you're dealing with pants because your body is proportioned. So you can't screw up proportions when it comes to pants. Now I need to read that question again just to make sure that you're not asking something that I'm not answering. But for the most part, uh, it's only when you are doing two pieces and pants, because they go all the way to the bottom of your body, you know, you don't have to decide on the length of the pants. Your tops should already be in proportion to whatever else you're wearing, your skirt or your, um, So you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry about pants. But let me read that again just to make sure that I'm answering this correctly. All right, that's one side. I've got a little skirt right here, kind of a big skirt. Let me read that again. Yeah, no, so you're, you're over worrying a little bit. <clears throat> you don't really need to worry. Your cardigans, if it, I'm going to assume you, your cardigan is in proportion for you. 
So the pants is a no-brainer. You just pick anything in your closet. You've already proportioned it to something else. The pant won't change it. It'll be perfect. Hope that makes sense. I think that's why so many women wear pants. Why they can buy them and ready to wear. They look so good because they're so easy. They don't really take a lot of um, concern. Just trying to press this one on the outside. I kind of wanted you to see this fabric as to uh, the shadow that it goes through. So this is one reason people will line pants. I actually kind of like it. I think it looks like a really lightweight, well done pant. So I wanted you to see the seam that will show through. So if you line a pant, you don't really want to line it if you want to get rid of that look. See, I don't think you really, it's just not that big a deal to me. But you don't really want to line, you, you more want to underline. Underlining is going to get rid of those seams. I think a lot of women misunderstand lining. Lining is really just cosmetic. It doesn't, there, if you want to change things or uh, change the outside appearance of the fabric, you're really better off to fuse as opposed to line that makes sense. Or to underline with a fabric. Lining supposedly is just cosmetic. And when you said the one about you just like the feel, that's really what lining is. Kind of just makes you feel good. So a top cardigan can be any length when I'm wearing trousers. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, but I appreciate your interpretation of that. I said it should be already proportioned in your closet. So let's say I'm 5'8". Um, the length of my tops are proportioned to my body. They're proportioned to the skirt I was wearing them with. They're proportioned to a jacket that I wear it with. Pants are not used to create the proportion. Other uh, items in my, gar in my wardrobe are. So when I pull a top out, it should already be proportioned to something else that's proportioned to my height. Therefore, I don't have to reproportion it again to pants. Is that better? Pants are not a considering factor when I am proportioning a garment because they're the full length of my body. They wouldn't help me decide on the length. I can wear a pair of pants and wear a top that is too long and I look shorter simply because it's out of proportion to my body, even though the pants are correct. Is that better? Better said? This is an original question, which you can say yes or no to. Yeah, no. There's no, you don't have to worry about proportioning pants. And you shouldn't be using your tops to proportion them to pants. Pants don't help you create the proportion. This is the inseam, you guys. so that my seams align, and then I stitch both directions. It does not matter. And it depends on how familiar you are with the pant pattern itself. And this is just aligning beautifully. This fabric is so soft, it's going to feel like my pajamas when I finish. It's really nice. Again, kind of look ahead. You want to make sure that you really line these edges up. I've noticed that when you don't line edges up, one side can be longer than the other because the edges aren't aligned. And when the edges aren't aligned, one leg can actually gain length over the other. Because of the shaping of the leg. All right, and I think we are ready for the waistband. perfect time to try on the pant um, and the reason you want to try on the pant now you know it fits but with every pant you've got a little bit of adjustment as far as the darts go and a little bit of tweaking and this is a great time to try them on 
and to tweak them to make sure that they're okay all the way around. I'm going to pin my pocket back. I think I lost a pin somewhere, which is always dangerous in this room. It's okay. We'll find it later. Somebody will find it. <laughs> we'll either vacuum it or step on it or something. Okay, so there's no pins. The only pins that I have in here are the ones that are... Oh, you're so smart. Thank you, sweetie. I feel much better knowing that it's in the pin cushion rather than in the rug. Um, you know, as I put the... The fly still here at the top is a little bit free to go back and forth. Just ignore that. You don't want to pin it because it's going to go in different parts of the waistband. But you can see those pants are just beautiful. They're just so pretty. All right, so the waistband now um, is narrow. It's very narrow. And you guys can change this. Um, I picked up this thin waistband from Armani because Armani does such a beautiful thin little waistband. When I cut it out, one side is on the selvage, so I do not have to finish that edge. It makes it very, very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of prepare that waistband. What kind of fabric would you recommend for inner lining? And what kind of fusible? I would use a really, I would use a cotton. This time of year, I would use a cotton, because anytime you're going to deal with two layers, you're going to add heat. Um, if, you're, if heat's not an issue for you, then it doesn't matter. Um, and then what kind of fusible? I sell fusible, so full disclosure. I don't think I use anything but our fusible, but that's obviously why I sell it. Okay. <laughs> Can this pant be made without the open leg? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a beautiful pant. I'm going to show you a few variations uh, Tuesday night that I hope you'll really like and that, that are really fun. So yes. The reason I did the opening is because I know you guys are really good at undoing what I do. So I figured if I do it, easy to undo it. It's harder to create it. So I did the hard part. Okay, I have a waistband here. Like I said, it's very thin and I'm going to press it and I'm going to... I sewed the ends and I turned the ends. So I'm just gonna, literally going to press it in half. One half is the selvage, the other end is not, it's a raw edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish that raw edge and I'm going to tuck up 3 eighths of an inch. So that makes a really skinny little waistband. That's the best kind of waistbands that there are. And that's simply because, you guys, we don't have our, our waist doesn't stay the same like a man's for three or four inches. It curves, it changes so quickly that if you wear those wide waistbands, they don't, they, they buckle. They have all kinds of issues. So you either want to wear a pant that's below your waist, or this one, if it's to your waist, you want to wear a really thin waistband or a contoured. Any of those work. So I'm just going to continue along. I'm going to press this up, this waistband. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm leaving the raw. This is the selvage because I cut it along with the selvage. And the selvage is always nice and tight anyway. And so I'm leaving the selvage down and I'm turning it up above that, 3 eighths an inch. So the waistband itself is only 3 eighths inch. Great little waistband. Okay, let's put it on. I'm just going to show you a couple tips when you go to put it on. If you're not cutting your waistband out of the selvage, whenever I cut my waistband, I kind of look for the selvage because I really want the waistband to be on the selvage. It's much easier. But if you're not doing that, just um, finish the edge, serge the edge, you know, finish however you want to do that. doesn't make a difference. Peggy, can you please repeat what you said about al alignment can cause the legs possibly being longer than the other. It was hard to hear once the sewing machine started. So just when the shape, when a, this pant has a very shaped leg, um, it's shaped beautifully, 
because a, a, a wide bottom leg can be very unflattering, but a wide bottom leg can also be very flattering. And the whole reason I did the slit with a wide bottom is because it is beautiful, but it has to come with a leg that is small at the top. So by saying that, you've got a lot of shaping in the leg. And if you notice the shaping in the front, the shaping in the back is a little bit different, but they go together. They sew together very beautifully. So if you don't keep that seam allowance, the same at the edge, then one leg as you go to sew down the side can become longer very quickly and one side can become shorter. So you got to keep your seam allowances even so that the leg, the length of the pattern stays the same. That's all. I mean you guys know that. It's just that because there's a lot of shaping in this one, it changes quickly. All right. You often say the wider the hem, the wider you look. Is that also the case with pants or just with skirts and dresses? It's also with pants, which is why I gave you this pant. I gave you it open in the front because it opening in the front does a wide, the whole reason I wanted to do a wide leg pant, but the fact of the matter is, is when you do a wide leg pant, you all look wider. I didn't want that. But this wide leg pant, because it's slit, doesn't act, sorry, I'm losing my voice, <clears throat> doesn't act like a wide leg pant, but it is. So I felt like this was the best way to do a wide leg pant. You can close it up at the bottom, <clears throat> but it gives you a wide leg pant. And some of you don't care, and that's okay. Just I, I'm just here to help you be aware, that's all. Okay, so I'm putting this waistband on, and I am starting at the front. I'm starting at the fly. And you're not going to pin the whole thing on. because you don't need to, and your pinning is not going to help it anyway. Because you're going to, as you're sewing, you're actually going to pull this waistband. I don't think my waistband is long enough. I was afraid of that. I actually um, did some changes, you guys, and I, don't, I think I did not do that change correctly. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll just go, and even if it's too short, I can cut another one later. Okay, so let me just show you what I did, is I just am taking this. Is there fusing in the band? No. What top are you wearing? Giorgio's top, uh, 312. And I like my pants even more than my top. Is that possible? My pants are 30, 4360. They're those plaid ones I did, the yoga pants. I just love them. Okay, so I've got that stuck up in there. I'm probably going to put a pin just to kind of hold it in place while I show you the back side. Do y'all know how to do these waistbands? You're going to edge stitch them in place. You're sewing all both layers at one time. So there's the front. I'm going to turn it around. And you can see that the, you want this tucked up until it passes the little metal mark. You want all that stuff in there until it goes. And then the waistband is flat on the back side. So that's what I'm going to do. I've already stitched the end. You just line it up. And you can look at any pant, and this is the way pants are done. I'll line them up. Go up there a little bit more. Alright, so we're going to start it again. It's just an edge stitch. I'm going to back stitch. Look at your pants and just be observant of the whole way they're stitched, guys. And you can see that the way they're done. Now what I want to do is I'm going to stick my pant into the sewing machine. I'm going to lay, and it's just you're going to do a little section at a time is all you're going to do. Because, you put it up there 3 8 I'm going to pull the waistband. I want it taut. There's many times where the pant will fit and the, um, the waistband flares. And the waistband flares because when I sewed on the waistband, I didn't pull it like I should. So you want to lay this inside. You want to put the waistband on top, tuck everything underneath, and then just give it a tug and hold it and do that little section. So there's no value to pinning the waistband in place at all. It won't do you a bit of good because it really needs to have a little bit of a pull. I've seen women who sew on waistbands and the pant is right and the waistband kind of flares like that. And that's simply because they didn't pull that waistband as they were sewing. So tuck that inside, make sure your seams are flat, make sure everything's like you want it to be, and then pull the waistband. 
and I'm going to do an edge stitch all the way around. I may not even do the whole thing, I just want you to see the difference as to how this lays. Okay, so pretty. And it looks just beautiful. Is this a bootleg or a wide leg? What's the difference to you guys? Do you know the difference? I think that a lot of times we hear these definitions and we don't even know what they mean. Let me know what you think the answer is. So every time you put that pant in, you just want to pull it. I'm just going to stop and just give you a look at this and how it looks. Isn't that beautiful? Look at this. Oh my gosh. I swear, one thing I love about sewing and having these beautiful methods is just how incredible they look. And they're not hard. Look, that's just a beautiful way to finish off the top of that pant. And it's thin. It, waistbands that need um, fusible, they're outdated, you guys. I don't want waistbands with fusible in them. They're just old. Isn't that beautiful? See how little tiny that is? And you've got your pocket. Now, if pockets, if pockets fit correctly, but they still have a tendency to gap, it can be your sewing. So sometimes you'll see manufacturers will come and they'll put a little zigzag stitch right here and they'll put a little zigzag stitch right there and that will just keep the pocket secured against the body. Isn't that beautiful? All right. And that waistband, you just keep going around. It's too short or I'd finish, you guys. I did some alterations and um, on the waistband. Well, that's too long a story. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I have to cut a new waistband. That is just beautiful. Okay, do you pull on the waistband if it's a contoured waistband? No, different issue completely. A contoured waistband is literally a one-to-one -one ratio. So you don't want to pull on a contoured waistband. It's a one-to-one. -one. But this is um, just a straight piece of fabric and it's being sewn to a waistline. It's a curved edge. And again, if you don't pull, you guys, and just for fun, you could try it one time by not pulling, you'll see that you, the pant comes to the waist and the waistband has this little fluffy all the way around it. You've got to give it a little tug when you're doing it. And don't do right sides together and flip it. Do it all in one. It takes a little bit of you know patience. You saw in the beginning how I was lining it up, but it, it's really beautiful once it's long, you know, once you've got it all lined up. All right, so Tuesday night we'll go over fitting. I'll go over all kinds of fun details. I'll cover lining a little bit more. Maybe what I'll do is come up with a pattern for lining so that it can be exact for you um, and where to secure it. And maybe I'll do a line pair, okay? I've got time tomorrow. I'll, I'll sew a line pair so that you can go through and see that process. I do like a line pan. I think in this case, I think of this as just a really great feeling pant, but also, just as I say that, I think our linings have changed so much because our fabrics have changed. Our fabrics are, have, in the last five years, just every year, I see them more and more sophisticated, more and more, I don't know, they just change so rapidly that um, I don't think the need for lining is there. That's why I ask you guys if you, but if you just love it, you love it, and I get that. I get that. Does the edge of the pan go all the way to the top of the waistband? It does. That's, you're going to use that. Because your, your waistband is only 3 8 inch wide, you're going to use that fold of the waistband as how far you know to put the pant in. So you put it all the way to the fold and then you just keep stitching. You said that when the bottom is loose, you should wear something more fitted on the top. Would you consider these pants loose? Yes. And therefore you can pair it with 195 instead of 600? You can pair it with 600 but tuck 600 in. Tuck it in. It's a great look. You're going to see it this fall all over the place. It's coming back. You knew it'd come back. It's a beautiful look. It's very flattering. It's that blouson look. And so we really, we really look forward to it. The beautiful blouses for fall and they're tucked into their pants and it's a great look. Do you cut the waistband differently when using the selvage? No, exactly the same. Just make sure you cut it extra long, you know, because the, the, if it's too long, you can just cut it off, but you cut it exactly the same, just a single layer. 
All right, you ready? You can do everything you need to do. And then the last step, we just show putting on the hook and eye and then putting hemming the pants. And you, I know you all know how to do that. All right, so we're going to go open up a store because we have a store opening today. Yay! And we have lots of beautiful fabric. Yay! And, but we have lots of beautiful fabric. I stole some of the, we had some Sally LaPointe come in and we had some um, Lafayette 148. That Sally LaPointe, if you look at it, the three, there's three peaches. She's made blouses layering them. Oh, so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And when I first felt that fabric, I thought it was silk. It's actually 100% cotton. I mean, it is just really luscious. I hope you enjoy. Um, what is Ponte and what is Scuba? Well, Ponte, I don't know what Ponte is. I never get Ponte, so I don't know what that is. Ponte, I know it's 100% polyester. By the definition of Ponte, it's 100% poly polyester. That's kind of in the definition. Scuba is a um, kind of a, a thick fabric. I don't know how else to say that. It's kind of spongy. Now, initially, scuba was all poly, all poly, but it was thicker than Ponte. Ponte is thin. I don't have any love or use or like for Ponte. I just don't think it should even be in our wardrobes, but that's important. Um, but scuba now, I'm starting to see scuba in a cotton poly blend. And I think that's really exciting because there's nicer fabrics coming in with a scuba. The advantage of scuba is it, it just lays so flat against the body. And literally they called it scuba because it's like your scuba diver it's like the neoprene that they scuba dive in it's not it's not that coarse but it is very it's very nice and as I've gotten um, that purple scuba that I put up it make a beautiful pair of pants simply because it just scallops the body really nicely it has a nice stretch to it it has a nice give to it it's really pretty okay but Ponte is thin yuck sorry not to be too opinionated Buy your 900 series. There's four DVDs in here, you guys, and they're just fun. They're just fun. We did um, Donna Karen, Dan Van Firstberg, all the designers and the history of fashion and who did what and how to apply it to your own sewing. And I think it's just great information for you to know. And it helps us and it helps you. All right. So the goal is to have happy sewing. 3219 is what we did today. ALC, Andrea Lieberman company is the name of the company that does it. If you watch her, she's got a lot of beautiful, beautiful designs. Anyway, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you Tuesday. All right, bye for now.